My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. What a strange year 2020 has been. And it seems like ages ago that we were all experiencing those first strange days, I guess it was in the month of March, when everything started to kind of unravel all around us. All of the, the news and then the, the lockdowns and the canceling of activities and having to isolate ourselves in our homes. And I don't know about you, but I had a little bit of the experience of phobia where I was kind of afraid of the situation. I don't know, just thinking like that every service I might touch could be a threat. That every person walking by might be sick. I remember waking up with a sore throat one morning and thinking, this is the beginning of the end. The pandemic puts a lot of us on edge, right? It's a curious thing. And I think one thing that COVID has done throughout the world is make everyone consider a lot what they truly value because death is on display. The fact that COVID is a disease that can, can affect anybody, it, it shows the finite nature of our lives. The fact that we are not immortal, but rather that someday we're all going to die. And it's hard for people to recognize that. It's hard for people to recognize that things come to an end, that my life will someday end in death. That even the life of this world, that, this, that all of creation will someday come to a close at the end of time. And the church reminds, of this, reminds us of this every November, in that final sprint of the liturgical year, in this last week of the liturgy, in which we meditate on your words, Lord, as you warn the apostles, as you prepare them for the end times. It's a chance for us to meditate on the reality of death. Jesus, you tell us in the gospel today, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth, nations will be in dismay, perplexed by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will die of fright in anticipation of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these signs begin to happen, stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Notice that shift to optimism at the end of this gospel passage. Jesus you're telling the disciples of this great destruction, right? the destruction of the end times. But then you look at each of them, you look at each one of us with hope. You say, when these signs begin to happen, stand up straight. Look up to the heavens, raise your heads because your redemption has arrived. You, Jesus, will come again at the end of times, coming on the clouds. You who are our redemption, our love. All this is to say that death is not something negative for a Christian. For one who has embraced the reality of Jesus Christ, death does not have the last word because you, Jesus, have overcome death. And so we can stand up straight and raise up our heads with joy and hope. What a contrast with the attitude of so many people in this world who are afraid of death, who become uptight and anxious. They turn away from this uncomfortable truth and they do everything they can to, to avoid it. We, as Christians, 
with the hope that you give us, Jesus, we can stare death down. We can look at it in the face. We're not afraid of it. And we can look past death to the life that you, Jesus, have prepared for those who remain faithful to you. You know, the pandemic puts before all of us the uncomfortable truth of death. This isn't the first time that's happened. I think really any war, for example, World War II or World War I, that evoked in, for, for all of humanity, for all of the people of that time, a reminder of our finitude, of, our, of the fact that we, we all will die. In my own life, one memory I have is September 11th, 2001, that terrible tragedy in which terrorists attacked the World Trade Center in the Twin Towers. It was a stark reminder of the fact that you know, we, could, we could be called to God at any time. In any moment, God may call an account of our lives. Scott Hahn, that wonderful theologian, that biblical scholar, when reflecting on the pandemic, he made that connection with September 11th. He said, in so many ways, the situation in which our world suddenly finds itself is unprecedented, but in other ways, it feels very familiar. I'm thinking, of course, of September 11th. I still remember the shock and the sorrow I felt watching the Twin Towers fall. I also remember the uncertainty of the days that followed. We didn't know then if and when the attacks would end. We didn't know what more the terrorists had in store for our country. All we knew was that in the space of a few hours, thousands of our fellow Americans died horrible deaths, and we were scared. For many of us, 9-11 was a wake-up call, a reminder that our comfortable, settled lives could be upended in a moment, that death can always be just one heartbeat away that nothing in this world is ever certain, least of all tomorrow. Not long after the towers fell, Kimberly, that's Scott's wife, Kimberly and I gathered the children to pray. Like us, they were struggling to make sense of what had happened. And Hannah, who had just turned 13, had a question for me. She said, Dad, I have to know, are we all gonna die? And I responded, yes, honey. A hundred percent, definitely. All the kids looked at me startled. I paused and then I continued. Everyone's going to die, Hannah. But I don't think it will be today. I added, the important thing, the real question, is not, are we going to die? But rather, are we ready to die? Later, after we finished our prayers, I turned the conversation back to Hannah's question, and I explained to her that while the mortality rate for each of us is 100%, right, all of us are going to die. Jesus, this is a reality of our lives. Our mortality rate is 100%. We're all going to die. While that is true, the immortality rate of each one of us is also 100%. Death is not the end, not for anyone. Every person who has ever lived is still alive in one state or another, in a state of grace or a state of disgrace. What a beautifully poetic way of describing the reality of our soul. Jesus, you have made us in your image and likeness. And one aspect of that is that while our bodies will die, while they will corrupt, they will be buried, Our souls are immortal. We have been made for eternity. And so it's very important that we live this life looking up to heaven, awaiting our redemption, living our life in such a way that we're ready to die. That's the important thing, not whether we're going to die or not, but whether we're ready to die. Jesus, if you call me now to your presence, would you be happy with me? If tomorrow were my last day, how would I live it? Am I living my life in such a way right now that it would make you proud? 
This is what the Church invites us to meditate on in these final days of the liturgy. And what a wonderful thing. You know, every time we pray at Hail Mary, we say, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for me now and at the hour of my death. Well, we can ask Mary now to conclude these 10 minutes. Mother Mary, help me not to be afraid of death, but give me your prayer, give me your support to stand up straight and raise my face to heaven and to live this life in such a way that your son would be proud. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you've communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help in putting them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.